Async await changes everything about how we are coding in Swift and of course in Swift UI. So in this tutorial, I will dive deep into explaining to you how async await works in a Swift UI project. This will be a hands-on example. So if you do want to build out this layout with async await, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Let's open up Xcode and dive in. So let's dive in into async await, one of the favorite topics that I found on WWDC 2020. Now, if you do like my teaching style, go ahead and check out Dev Factory, a 60 minute Zoom call with me on uh, topics like uh, Swift UI or async await for that matter. Go ahead and check out rebeloper.com slash mentory. Now with that out of the way, let me just talk about today's topic, async await and why that is so important. Well, uh, I will, uh, explain this to you through a project, how we did this uh, before and how we are going to do this in the future, of course, after the fall. So this will completely change how we are coding in iOS and Swift for that matter of fact. Okay, so uh, what I've done here is uh, I have just created a brand new Xcode project. Now this is in the beta version. So let me just open up uh, about Xcode here. So it's Xcode 13 a beta. So make sure that you are downloading it or if you we already have Xcode 13 then the better for you. Okay so just started off a brand new project and because I do want to show you only the async await stuff I have prepared some uh, default files for you that you can download from the link in the description. Go ahead and check it out. It will take you to my site where you can find all the resources for the YouTube videos and then just search for uh, a title of this video there and for the date. Okay, so once you do that, you will find all of these files and API error content view. So let me just drag and drop. Uh, well, most of them uh, besides the JSON file, uh, let me just, well, first of all, let's delete the content view here. Let's move to trash and then uh, we can just go ahead and paste, uh, well, drag and drop all of them right over here. And one final thing that we want to add in here is on the app itself, go ahead and paste this in. So we want to make sure that this is available from iOS 15 onwards. Okay, so uh, what we got here is just simply uh, uh, a plain old content view with a, a for each view. Let me just show you this. And uh, it has a fetch on the top right corner right over here. Well, yeah, we need to uh, do some other stuff here. Also, we want to go and navigation view so we can see that navigation bar. And that is basically the setup we need for this project. Let me hit command R again and we will see that. There we go. And if we tap on fetch, well, actually it will not do anything. But as you saw, uh, you we can do this. Let me just uh, show you what we are going to build out here. So this is the demo project. So if I tap on fetch, we are going to fetch all of those files with async await. So really, really cool. Okay, so uh, uh, how are we going to achieve this? Well, in the content view, let's just take here, uh, take a look at the content view right over here. We are having a, a kind of a logic here, how we are handling it. Uh, I do have a view model, so I'm using MVVM here. Go ahead and check out the YouTube video on that on my channel. And uh, on the view model, I have an is fetching. So we, whether we are fetching or not, if it is fetching, we are showing a progress view. Otherwise, I'm checking if the person's count is zero, then I just uh, display a text of tap on fetch to get the population. And uh, you guessed it, we have a models here with a person and population. It's an array of persons that's really straightforward. And uh, let's just go. Uh, with uh, the for each view right over here. Uh, I'm adding it into a scroll view, uh, putting a Z stack with an async image. Again, async image is uh, iOS 15 plus. So make sure to check out the previous video on this playlist so you know how to use async image uh, as well. Now, basically that's it. I have a fetch here and uh, 
that's just it. Closers fetch. Uh, so this is how we used to do this uh, previously. Now we just went to the closers fetch. Let's just jump to definition. And now you will see actually how kind of complicated it was, but now it won't be. So here we have our URL. We are going to fetch some uh, data. And on that URL, we are going to uh, add a data task. We are getting back a data, response, error. Uh, we check the error, we check the response, uh, uh, we check the status code of the response, and then we check if the data is non-nil. Uh, here, I'm just printing out the data so we do know what we fetched. And then I go back to the main thread because after that I'm uh, uh, changing the person's published variable. So the view uh, will be updated because yeah, it's, it's binded to the view. And um, yeah, what do I do here? I decode with the JSON decoder to a population model from the data. And then from the decoded persons, I just add that to the person's published value. I just add it here uh, just for you to know how to kind of debug these JSON files that you are fetching from the web. Uh, all, the, all of the most important catch error types that you might have on this do catch statement. And then I just resume the task. So yeah, this is really, really a, a long way of doing it. And yeah, uh, we are uh, just grabbing the error. And uh, once we do have an error, we are just printing it out. You should just actually present it in an alert, but that's what we are doing here for the tutorial's sake. And we are setting is fetching to from true to false when, the, uh, uh, when we uh, do have some fetch. And how do we know? Let's just jump to definition again. Well, uh, we either complete with some error or when we got the persons, then we complete with nil. You know, the completion has an optional error. So whenever uh, there is no error, we complete with nil. So that's kind of how we did this in the past, like with completion handlers. And that's a lot of code. So take a look at this. It's a humongous code. And let's just see how this uh, uh, would work because that is just simply uh, the, the code here, but we are not uh, uh, calling it in either on the fetch button. But usually what we would do here is just call this closers fetch on the actual on appear. So we just go dot on appear perform and call closers fetch. So there we go. We have our closers fetch on the on appear. So let's build and run this. And um, yeah, as you can see, it's automatically when this view appears fetching all of the data. Now, what is this data all about uh, before we move on? Because uh, yeah, and by the way, you could just add in here closers fetch also. It's the same thing. So let us just comment this out and uh, fetch on the tap of the button. So here we go. We just fetch and there it is. It's just fetching. So let me just go a little bit behind the scenes how we are fetching all of this. And this is really, really cool. A little side note here, but uh, you have to know uh, if you do want to test some mock API. So here I have my URL. So if you recall on the completion, well, we had that URL with setup.url. Now, where is this coming from? Well, I have created this uh, mock URL and it is at Mocky. So go ahead and check out designer.mocky.io. It's a free service and you can create a new mock. And what I did, and let's do that. Let's do that right now. So let's create a new mock. And here we just add in the body. And where are we getting the body? Well, you have this JSON file. So let's open that up. Well, maybe in Xcode. So just drag and drop it onto your Xcode icon. And uh, this is what you will get. Okay, uh, go ahead and uh, copy that out and then paste it right over here. So yeah, you may change it. The images are from Unsplash. Okay, and you may add as many as, uh, as you'd like. So just generate my HTTP response. And here it is. This is your mock URL. Of course, you can uh, manage your mocks or delete uh, this mock by uh, calling this URL. Okay, so that's that. Let's just go back to Xcode. And uh, yeah, I will just close this JSON. And now I will just 
just simply change that. And you should do that too, because maybe this URL will not work for you. Most probably I will just uh, shut it down. Okay, so uh, basically that's it. Let's build and run again to see uh, whether it's working. So tap on fetch to get population, just tapping on fetch. And there it is, we have our completion kind of fetch. Now here comes async away to the rescue and this is so much easier to use. But you gotta learn some things, you gotta understand how async await works. Well basically in this case we are just uh, doing this non-asynchronous work. So one line by one and it's waiting for it to complete and once it, it is then it's going to go to the next line of code and so forth. Now with async await you can have these async functions and it tells uh, the compiler that okay just do this and whenever you're ready I'm waiting for it and then I will just continue but it's up to you just go ahead and uh, do your work there and um, yeah that is what we are going to build out let's just go back to the content view let me just have here some more room that's right okay so let's just uh, start off by adding it on the on appear well uh, let's create our first function right over here uh, after the closers fetch so func and let's just call this async await fetch await fetch there we go okay so how do we kind of declare that this is an asynchronous uh, a function well we just add here async and um, yeah, this is added before the return. So maybe if this returned something, uh, well, we could just add in here void, void. And uh, that is how it's added in there before the return. But I would just uh, remove this for now. Okay, so this is how you declare an async. Now, this means that whenever you are uh, calling this async await fetch function, you need to be in an async environment. So yeah, let's just do that. And uh, uh, first, well, it's kind of, we have these tasks. You most probably heard by now about tasks. So that is kind of an on appear, but for async functions. So dot task, there we go. We just use the one with code. And then we type out async await. And as you can see, async await fetch is an asynchronous function. So we just select that, but uh, it will say that, okay, async but not marked, expression is async, but is not marked with await. And that is what we want to add in here. Await, 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 there we go. So now we are waiting for that async await fetch to kind of complete. Okay, so this is how you declare async await, async functions, asynchronous functions, and this is how you call them, await, async await, fetch, and they need to be in an asynchronous environment. So this is why we are using task here, because that's automatically an asynchronous environment. But what if I want to use this, let's say, on the button? Well, we have to declare this uh, uh, inside our action like so. Let me just comment this out because we are not using it and it's pretty straightforward. We just go and uh, type out async, async, and then inside these two parentheses we can add in our asynchronous function. So await and async, uh, await, Come on, async. Oh, I will just go ahead and fetch this async await fetch. There we go, async await fetch. Okay, so that is how you would do it in a scenario when, for example, on the tap of a button, that is not an asynchronous environment. Okay. So let's move forward and get to do the interesting part. Well, first of all, I would just uh, create our, um, instead of our closers fetch, I will just create a new function and that is going to be called again, async await fetch, but it's going to be co uh, called on the view model. So let me just jump to definition here and then I will create a new function 
and that is async await fetch. And this will be uh, asynchronous, so async, and it will also throw. Now, why is this important? Well, because uh, from the view model, we want to throw any errors that might occur, and uh, we will catch them on the actual view itself. So uh, let's see what we uh, want to do here. Well, first of all, let's copy out our URL and that is uh, right over here. Okay, that is our URL added in there. And then we are going to use an asynchronous data task from the URL session. And this will return us a tuple and uh, the first uh, part of the tuple will be a data and then a response. Okay, response, there we go. And this is coming from URL session, a dot, uh, share, and then a dot, data. And as you can see, there are quite a few here, but what we are using is data for delegate. And as you can see, it's marked async throws, okay. And uh, well, not the with the four, but with that, because that's the URL request. So data from, there we go, data from, and that is with a URL. So we just pass in our URL there. We don't care about the delegate, it's optional. So that is our, how we are actually calling our URL session data. So now we got our tuple with the data and response, and this is how simple it is to kind of uh, catch the errors and guard against them. First of all, we want to check if the response is actually not nil. So we just go and guard unwrap that. So guard let uh, response equals and uh, response as URL, uh, URL, oh, HTTPS, sorry, HTTPS URL response, there we go. And uh, else we want to actually not return, we want to throw an error. So throw, and we are going to throw our API error a dot and no response. Now, uh, this is what you just copy and paste it into your project. We have three types of uh, custom errors that we can have here. Okay, so uh, let's just see here your expression. Yeah, we want to try this. So let's just add in here, try, because yeah, it froze. And then we also want to await for this. So this is a wait. This is how we are waiting for the data and response tuple to come back. Okay, so yeah, this is kind of important, but once you get a hold of it, you will uh, understand it better. Okay, now it's time to uh, check if the status code is 200. So guard uh, response dot status code equals 200. Otherwise we are just going to again throw some errors. So throw uh, the API error dot uh, no 200. Okay, so these are kind of custom error codes that I have created. Now it's time to decode our data and then we just go guard, guard, let. And for the constant, I'm just going to go decode it. And we are going to try to decode this. So uh, let's try this. It's an optional because it might fail. And uh, we are going to use a JSON decoder dot decode, there we go, from. Now the, the decode type will be our population dot self. So this is what we are going to pour our data in. And from the data, that's our data. Now, otherwise we are not going to return. We are going to throw uh, the API error of no data. Okay, so that's our decoded data. Now that we do have our decoded data, remember well, on the URL session .share data we are going to background mode. So now we need to update the person's uh, published variable and that will update uh, the view itself. So we need to come back to the main thread. Now uh, I will show it to you how to do it the old way, but after that I will uh, show you how to do it with the new way, the, with the actors. So this is how we would do, so dispatch q.main.actor. Dot dot, uh, 
uh, async and then we just go self dot persons equals decoded dot persons okay so yeah basically this is what you would do let's just check it out if this is going to work so let's go back to the content view and uh, right over here we want to first of all well let's just check if well let's add in our is fetching right over here okay and then we just go view model dot async await fetch and um, as you as you already saw uh, we are uh, we are using that async uh, so what we are should do <laughs> it's not like this we should try so we just go with a do catch statement and we are awaiting for that async await fetch to uh, give us some values so we just go await and view model dot async await and as you can see it also froze so hooray we can use that catch right over here let's just print out uh, the errors localized description and uh, while we are here we might want to set the is fetching to false okay let's just add that in there okay and copy that out and paste it in there of course because this might come in a background thread we also want to go again with dispatch q dot main dot async oh, dot dot async and add all of these inside there okay but again this is kind of the old way of doing this uh you let's just hit command b so we have color correction there color i do want to see okay it it looks like it's okay so let me just add these two right over here also set back to false and set back to false okay so async await fetch where is this uh triggered well on the uh task so whenever this view appears so let's see that and it's working perfectly okay so yeah this is this is fine so i guess now you would have this view model uh, let's just take a look uh, how we would just replace this dispatch queue dot main async and that is pretty uh, pretty, pretty straightforward and uh, you all you have to do is just on the struct itself you just go at main actor and that will make our struct a main actor so we don't have to kind of go back to the main thread with dispatch queue dot main async and we can just do this right over here really really nice okay now uh, we could do this uh, let me just show you what would happen if you are not using dispatch queue so what i will do is just copy this out and not add the main actor property wrapper so let's just build and run there and uh, what do we should be seeing well uh, it's really pretty strange that yeah uh, maybe because uh, the content view is already a main actor uh, then it's working but i highly suggest that you also add the content view uh, model to be also a main actor yeah the content view was a main actor and now the content view model should be also main actor so yeah now we can do otherwise we would have that purple uh, warning that okay we are trying to modify the main thread from a background thread and that's it now take a look at this this the difference between uh, these two codes As you can see there are a lot of completion handlers we have to take care of the errors we might forget to do so and then we are not completing you have to complete when the person is and it from the decoded persons it's a lot of code and it's uh, really really messy and um, you you really have to be focused to do all of that stuff correctly now take a look at the async await fetch so you just uh, 
uh, set it as an async function that might throw, and then you just try and await for the your session uh, shared data. You might get back a data and a response, and you check for the response, you for the status code, and you decode that uh, data, and you just set the persons uh, from the decoded persons because this is actually a main actor. Of course, all of this is tied to our content view. Okay, and uh, yeah, by the way, this is uh, on a task, so that's great, but what if I do want to show it on a button? Well, we just wrap it into an async. So let's just build and run there. And yeah, now you can see tap on fetch to get the population. We just tap on the fetch and it's fetching it and it is working uh, really, really nice. So it's really, really cool. Now we, this changes the way that we are coding in Swift in iOS. So I really looking forward for this in the fall and I just can't wait to build out production code with uh, this new async await. Now, if you do like my teaching style, go ahead and check out that factory on my site. It's at rebelloper.com slash mentoring. If you do have any questions about Swift UI or async await for that matter, go ahead and check it out. Or I will meet you on a 60 minutes Zoom call. Again, it's at rebelloper.com slash mentoring. I just love how async await makes our lives easier and makes us build iOS apps much, much faster, of course, with Swift UI. So if you did like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And while you are at it, make sure to hit that notification bell to get notified of new videos as they do come out on my channel. New videos like these ones, they are really, really cool. They are all about Swift and Swift UI in general. And as usual, I will see you in the next one.